and Michael Madgett live from Hollywood, California. With me, you used to know him as the czar of the virtual background, the one and only Pro GK Academy, Omar Zini, who today might have lost his title, man. You might have uh, first error. I think you, you, you had your perfect Allison Becker record going for a while, and then all of a sudden a couple, a couple mishaps, no. you know, are people going to be able to uh, forgive you? Well, people don't know it happened now that you're breaking that fourth wall. So everyone knows it happened. <laughs> and Adelaide, I mean, she probably could have just, she probably wouldn't have said anything the whole, the whole show, but Hey, you know what, Mike, mm. we'll out it now. We'll get it. I put the wrong logo <laughs> or I put the wrong team and I mistakenly did that. I went on Wikipedia. I should have just trusted Mike's notes and uh, yeah, just lesson to everybody out there. Do your homework before you try to show off your background. <laughs> Do your research, guys. Do your it, like Do I said, like 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 you said, Omar. It could have been worse. You could have put a, put up a Duke background to a former North Carolina Tar Heel. You could have yeah. done that. So exactly. this podcast would have been done before we even started. But hey, you know what? I had a second <laughs> chance. I came back. I redeemed myself. And everyone who doesn't even know what's going on, welcome to the show. Uh, well, well, the reason that Omar's got that UNC background is because we have a former UNC alum, uh, obviously now goalkeeper at FC Norschland. Uh, in Denmark, uh, the one and only uh, Adelaide Gay. Uh, Adelaide, did I pronounce Ad- By the way, I can't pronounce Adelaide. Do you go by Addy ever? Ads? No, that was perfect. Did I? Um, okay. Well, Adelaide, yeah, good. Um, Addy. Yeah, you can call me Addy. Okay. okay. <laughs> you're like Addy, Much I easier. Guess. Yeah, yes. you're like... <laughs> no, well, when I was a kid, I made everyone call me Adelaide because I was... I thought I was fancy or something, but <laughs> now I don't care. I'll answer to anything with an A, pretty much. <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. You know, that's so funny. Cause like, uh, I have a friend of mine, um, my friend, uh, Lourdes and for first time I remember I, I met her, I'm like, I'm like, Oh, your name's Lourdes. She's like, please don't call me Lourdes. That's literally <laughs> sounds like we're at like some elegant black tie ball. Like, no, just, just call me Lulu. I'm like, all right, Lulu. That's, that's as, that's as 180 as you can get from that. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, well, Adelaide, uh, before we kind of start and kind of get into this topic, which, uh, I mean, my gosh, you've got some incredible film here that we're going to be sharing on on making in-game adjustments. Insane. Um, for those people out <laughs> there who are – oh, no, it's good. It's good. It's Omar-level Pro GK Academy good. That's how good it is. <laughs> Wow. So, um, <laughs> but before we get started, um, obviously we were chatting a little bit about this beforehand, and I think a lot of people might not kind of be familiar with this. Um, you're actually a founder of, of a brand out there um, that's that's kind of taken the soccer world by storm. And uh, and one of the really cool things is that it's two former two former players, right? That you guys both kind of started this together. So um, why don't yep. you tell a little bit about? Uh, oh God, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce it. Duchtig, Duchtig. Whoa, yeah, Duke did, yeah, <laughs> good, <laughs> very Swedish. Um, yeah, so I guess this is our fourth year in business now, and um, it's me and Tiffany Weimer, and we are both playing in. Oh, good job with the background. There we go. Um, there we, we are go. both. <laughs> <laughs> we were both playing in Sweden at the time, and we had talked, you know, for a while about uh, how we didn't have a soccer-specific notebook that we really liked to use. Uh, that was like a moleskin and, and nicer because you can find some out there and um, but you know all the nicer notebooks you have to draw the field in and being pretty OCD we you know it drove me crazy that I had to draw the field in every time and it looked different every time and I just love to take notes and um, so we we kind of started it not, I won't say on a whim but you know we were I was trying to find a company that would make them and a company was like well we're not going to make them but we'll sell you 500 of them. Um, So we were like, well, why not? Let's just buy 500 and maybe other people will want it as well. And so uh, we bought them and people, you know, primarily coaches, actually, we, we were players at the time. um, But I think it's a no brainer for coaches. And so people bought them and, and then we were like, well, what else do you guys want? And they were like, we want soft cover. We want it to be waterproof. We want um, all these other kind of things. So we've kind of expanded from there. Um, but that's the general story. I mean, my God, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's such a cool story and everything like that. And like, I mean, Omar can attest to this as somebody who's very meticulous about preparation. Obviously a lot of the coaches that we've had on the show and, and players as well too, you know, are, are really much about session design and making sure that they're very specific in their session design. Uh, I mean, Omar, I mean, you know, we used to just write it on napkins, you know, I mean, this is, this is a much better way to go about it. Right. 
I'm not as old as you, Mike, so I don't, I'm not going to say that I've, uh, I've done I've done napkins before, but I definitely think Adelaide and I are from the same generation. So I think, uh, you know, we both started with papers. I started doing, you know, I have probably like a whole notebook now of, of uh, organized papers where I just drew the field out myself. I'm too, not lazy, but I spend money on the wrong things, Adelaide. So I will have to buy one of your notebooks. A lot of my friends have them and a lot of them, you know, swear by them and swear that they obviously make the, uh, yeah, the, the process a lot easier. So I will have to jump on that. I mean, I think one of the really awesome things about it, you know, Adelaide, and we've talked about this even on the show. Um, we had a uh, Caleb Patterson Sewell uh, on um, in in, in uh, on the podcast is that a lot of young goalkeepers, you know, they don't think about the future and they don't think about creating an asset for themselves. And and the fact that you're still in your playing career and that you saw an opportunity to to create an asset for yourself that because you know because as we all know, you know, our, our playing career is finite and. Uh, I mean, geez, Louise, you definitely have a career as a coach if you want to do that based on the video back down, breakdowns that you gave. Um, but, but it's awesome to, for, to, for you to be this forward thinking. I know, Omar, this is something you've tried to discuss with, with goalkeepers all the time. Yeah, uh, it's, never, it's not going to last forever. So, I mean, if you can find a way to have a passion that you have, well, for me, it was goalkeeping. I uh, didn't know right away that I wanted to get into coaching, but I think there were always like foundations that I, I – put down from the beginning of just watching film all the time and understanding and being curious about the position. And I've been fortunate enough to have that translate to what I do full time now. So I'm sure Adelaide can attest to that as well. It's just like, you know, being like sparking, uh, sparking that creativity, but in the goalkeeping sphere takes you a lot further than sparking it and trying to do something else um, in a different field. I'm not saying you should it, but if it's goalkeeping, you already have a leg up on all the, all the competitors who are trying to catch up to you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, you know, if you do what you love and, and you kind of become that expert in that one area and you follow the things that you enjoy the most, um, you can carve out something in that, that arena for sure. It's much easier than just starting from scratch. And I know with, um, you know, I went to business school or I went to school for business, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, and yeah, coming up with random ideas, you don't have any expertise in that area. So um, I kind of got lucky. This is all the things that I love in, in one one thing. So. You got lucky, but you created your luck. That's what my my <laughs> my, my friends always tell me. Ah, man, you got so lucky with like your pro GK stuff and like goalkeeping. I'm like, sure, but like you know, you have to start. I've made videos in my backyard with like terrible grass. My goal did not have any nets. I had a, like a frame that I had since I was a kid. Didn't have a net on it. I bought a net, put it on there. I thought it was the coolest upgrade ever. And then it was just like, okay, I need to probably go to a turf field now. This the aesthetic is terrible <laughs> here. So it's just like you got to start somewhere, and then from there it uh, it develops. So congrats to you and your team. Hopefully it uh, takes off. Yeah. Well, it takes off more than it has. <laughs> well, 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 I, I, I will say this right now, as, uh, as I think we might be momentarily being joined by an, another Princeton uh, goalkeeper uh, 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 alum from the city of Princeton, New Jersey. Although I know that you went to Lawrence Prep, so Suski is going <laughs> to talk a little bit about that, I think, in a, in a couple seconds here when, uh, when, when she gets on the air. By the way, Stan Anderson, Camp Shutout, says, love me some Adelaide in the comment oh. section right now. So shout out to the one and only Stan Anderson. Anderson. I'm wearing his camp shout out shirt as we speak. So there we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. There we uh, there there we go. Oh, I think we I think <laughs> we're hearing. Oh, there's oh, a th hole in my coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, guys! We are joined by a special guest, the one and only UCLA <laughs> special guest, Suski <laughs> <Sesquiel> Weber, <laughs> who did not attend Lawrence Prep. I didn't. I'm a townie. <laughs> I'm a townie. I went to Princeton High, so uh, we 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 joked around that about that uh, Adelaide. The, the the reason that uh that you you did not attend Princeton High is because you know Susky's got to keep that that record uh, at the school. What record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are you doing? It's nice to meet you. I, I'm good. Um, it's funny because I I definitely remember you from when I was I was younger. Um, you can say I mean, little. I think you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I have kind of a funny story that I've you know I've never really told anyone, but well a few people. But um, I met you when I was 10, 11 maybe, and um, it was funny. I was I don't know why I was at the hotel that it might have been in Wusa um, where you guys were staying at and. My mom at the time, uh, Brianna Scurry was was eating breakfast in the hotel, and my mom was like, "Oh, go go over go over and get her an autograph." And I was like, "Mom, 
she's eating breakfast. Like, I don't want to interrupt her. Like I was very shy. Cause I was like, <laughs> you know, 10, 11 years old. And so my mom's like, no, no, like, it'll be fine. Go over and ask for autograph. I go over and ask for autograph and <laughs> short story. She's just like, no, I'm eating breakfast. And of course, yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. <Brian. laughs> <Yes. Brian. laughs> I know. <laughs> and I was like, and so of course I like ran away and I was like mortified. I think I was like crying. And, um, you were there in the lobby and you like took a picture with me and gave me your autograph and everything and, and made it better. So. Oh, see that? <laughs> yeah, I'm Gold not star. a bitch, Mike. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief when I do oh, like my God. analysis. I know, I know the, the, I the love joke that story. The joke, the joke, at, the joke Addy always is like when, uh, <laughs> when, it, whenever Suskia starts doing breakdowns it, and she starts talking about, it, she's like, this is ridiculous. She's like at my sessions, like, this is what I expect. And I tell them that's unacceptable. And we're just like, everyone's like, I was like, no one wants to train with you. And she's like, I swear to God, that's, I'm a nice person. I swear. I swear. I swear. just sound like it on the air. I'm really, really nice. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, oh. I love it. But, 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 but Addy, you know, I think another awesome, really cool thing right here, obviously we have, you know, Suskia on here, you know, who's a part of the ownership group for Angel City FC, you know, coming to NWSL mm -hmm. next, next season. And uh, Addy, you know, you yourself as a, as a budding entrepreneur, you know, and both of you guys, you know, having a, a female run brand. I mean, the, by the way, I think also one of the really cool things about it is that it's not like people are like, oh, it's a female owned brand. It's just, <laughs> it's just a soccer brand and, yeah. and it's really popular. I think it's just, it's just really a testament to, I mean, look, you guys can talk more about this, but just the progression of society as a whole. So I just keep saying yeah. the UNC background. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> All right, uh, no, I, I definitely think that's great. I think, um, you know, we love it when we see other women own businesses, especially going to the United soccer coaches convention. Um, just, you know, there, there are so many women in soccer and then they just get out. Some go into coaching, but they just move on to a totally different life. And I think it's really cool. Um, when women stay involved in the game, even after they retire in all sorts of different capacities, not just coaching. So I think that's it's awesome. kind of nice to see. I think whether it was, you know, I'd like to think that it was angel city that kind of got the ball rolling with it, but now just so many other women athletes that are now starting stuff or buying into stuff. I mean, Bri just joining, you know, Washington and um, their, their ownership group and, and just across all sports. Um, and I think, I can't remember who the basketball player, but one of the NBA, WNBA players is one of the first to be part of ownership of a team. So I think that mm -hmm. it's opening the floodgates and it's awesome. Yeah, it's very awesome. I think, I know Naomi and with the courage as well. Um, I think yep. everybody... Yeah. And I think that's fantastic because it's, you know, women not helping other women, but sort of getting involved um, in the, the women's game will, I think, elevate things. So yeah, no, right. not just good. men owners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it, I think it just opens that door for the future that, yeah, we uh, women can own teams. We can do anything, you know, so exactly. somebody yeah. just had to start doing it. Yep. You hear that, Omar? Yeah. I just—it was too—it was too easy. It was too easy to throw you under the bus right there. It was too—it was too oh, easy. Omar, I'm, oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking <laughs> with oh, me. With no, no, Omar, okay. because remember a year ago when uh when uh when hey, Ariana, hey, it's when, changed. When, it's changed. It's changed. I know it's changed quite a bit. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we gotta do like a we gotta do a reaction. I don't you don't you don't know what happened, but essentially, uh, we had a guest who called me out for not posting uh, enough uh, female content. I thought I did, okay. but I guess not. But then you go back and do it, and then again, I, I we talked about it here as well. Like you see some of the the ignorant comments that people write, and then now I'm like, okay, you know, because I didn't post enough about this, I didn't I wasn't aware of these ignorant comments that you know the the women in in all sports have to deal with. And then I started posting more and more. And then some, some guy DM me. He's like, bro, what's up with all these like female, female content. I was like, well, you got to get used to it. Or you got just unfollow me. Like I, at this point, I don't really care. Like just, it's going to keep coming. So I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. Like it's yeah. just cause you DM me. I'm going to say, oh, you're right. Yeah, it's, that's a great, it's a great point. So that's what it is. Though. Yeah. I think it's, it, it's a change of, it is a change of perspective. And I think the more you show it, the more people will go, okay, like I need to respect this game. Not just because it's, you know, a female goalkeeper, but it's like we're goalkeepers as a union, as a whole group. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's easy to forget about it, especially when you're immersed in your own little bubble, um, you know, with my team or whatever. But every once in a while, I'll see a post about women and then you'll on a on a bigger soccer platform and you go into the comments and it's like 
to the kitchen and like all this stuff. Oh yeah. How are people are... still saying that? It's crazy. I will say too, growing up, I know Saskia, I don't know if you want to hear this, but like it's Bri okay, was like, was it. like, Bri was like my, I mean, she was like my idol. That's I grew fine. up watching her. I would watch her. <laughs> I mean, that, I, I remember I, we played against them 2007 or something, 2006 maybe. And it was like a U.S. Women's National Team versus my club team. We beat them. But after the game, I like went up to her. I was like, oh, like I, ever since I was young, I was watching you play like 99 World Cup. And like, I like that you you're like, out. ever since I was like, what were you, 19 when you went up to her? <laughs> no, no, 2006. I was 13. I was 14, 14. 14. So ever 14. since I was young, you said to her. I mean, well. No, but since, since 99. But like, if you look at even like the, 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 the goalkeepers that we in the States had to look up to, I mean, yeah, Brad Friedel, uh, I mean, uh, Tim Howard, all those guys. I mean, for me, it was just like Ryan round Scurry was like the first like champion. Like you saw her on, on TV, you're like, oh, damn, okay. Like she's pretty ba- badass. And I never, I never even said like, oh, it's a female goalkeeper. I was like, damn, somebody who's as good as, as I want to be at what they do and what I want to do, damn, okay. Like I need to step up my game. I was never as athletic as her, unfortunately. I never really got Not to that max are. capacity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And same, same with are. you, Sasuke. I mean, we've seen, we've seen some of those pictures behind you. I know we, oh we've God. seen you at your, your tonest and your fittest. So I think you, yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't tell no, yourself I short. I know you got it too. I was on the bench while you were watching. I was over in the corner. <laughs> so, Sasuke, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell you this, Sasuke, but I actually did a deep dive and I actually found some, uh, oh, no. some WUSA, uh, a tape of you uh, out there. And I don't know if, uh, if we're ever going to want to share that share that sure on here. I, don't time, know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what the copyright situation is right there but oh my gosh were you quick unreal yeah. like oh, oh, I, <laughs> you were scary how my gosh you coming off your line i mean i i just saw the fear out of somebody's eyes they're like no nope go down and smother <laughs> that ball we're not getting anywhere near you, you we're jumping right over you that is uh ah, thanks i'll have to see it uh, you'll you'll know definitely any of that have stuff to exist anymore oh yeah it still it still exists out there um <laughs> Let's uh, let, let's jump into this topic right here, guys. Uh, speaking of uh, of, of in game in game stuff, um, uh, today's topic, guys, is uh, in game adjustments. Um, I think this is a topic that we haven't really covered yet because I think there's a both a, a, a mental and a physical side side to it. Um, I laid for maybe some of the parents out there listening that that don't know kind of like the vernacular we're using. Like, what do we kind of mean by an adjustment uh, during a game? So. Uh... I don't, I don't necessarily know how, how you would define it. To me, an adjustment is sort of um, a decision to change the way you're playing a little bit. So whether it's in possession or, um, you know, something's breaking down and you need to fix it. Uh, yeah, I would say an adjustment uh, is not necessarily something new that you're doing. It's just a decision to make a save a different way or position yourself differently. I don't know if that's how you define it as well. Mike. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go off of that. I want to tell you guys a quick story. I know Sas, get your get your popcorn ready. OK, oh, God, <laughs> no, I saw so I, I made my I, I told you, everyone who listens to this podcast knows that I went to like in the, this Armenian tournament, uh, the Pan Armenian Games in uh, like two years ago. It's been crazy. That's been already two years, but they hit a ball over the top and it bounced. And I thought there's no way this guy's going to hit it, you know, off of, off the bounce. There's there's no way. So I kind of like shifted over to the near post just a little bit slower than I usually would because I was like he has to take one more touch he's going to square it he shot it on the bounce puts it far post and it hits the post and it goes in and I remember going Jesus dude why did you not move faster like what you were obviously surprised but like why didn't you move quicker and then like probably later in the game I kept reiterating to myself I'm like dude you just gotta go back to the basics you gotta get from point a to point b fast and respect that that person could hit it first time or two uh, two touch so later in that game not a similar situation but very very close the ball gets squared across and I sprint all the way across the goal I get set the guy headers it far post I make a good save and in my head I'm just like if I had not made that in-game adjustment of like beating myself up and going back to the basics and the fundamentals of like get to your get to point A to point B mm-hmm. fast as quickly as possible, and then from there have a chance to get your feet set. Things that I say in training and that I coach, I would have never made that second save. So I just hopefully that kind of helps people understand what, in my opinion, what I what I see in-game adjustments as. Yeah, no, I think um, I mean it can go. There's a whole spectrum of the, what the definition can be. If we're talking about individually, like. For me, it would really be something where reading the other team and what what what's their game plan here? Like, are they all of a sudden, you know, now loading up and shooting from distance, like for some stupid reason that they think they should shoot on distance on me? Um, and like, I, I love I love that. I even say <laughs> it to my the people now when people tee up and shoot on Lauren 
for UCLA from I'm like good go ahead that's awesome like I'm not gonna check on her from outside um but I think but those adjustments are they playing through balls like what is my start like what maybe something we had seen um in pregame when we were watching tape is different now maybe there's maybe their lineup is different maybe their shape is different and now um, where I was playing maybe a little further off my line because of how they were playing the games we've seen before. Now I have to maybe my, adjust myself and look for different things. I, um, and then it goes as far as to, you know, game management. Like, what are we doing? Are we, am I slowing the game down? Am I speeding the game up? Like adjusting on the fly of game management for your team, depending on if you're up, if you're down, you know, time on the clock. Um, if somebody gets hurt, if, you're, if your shape changes, and stuff so it's it's a lot of things yeah you know it's 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 funny um because Addie, you brought up the whole fact of like it doesn't have to necessarily be something new because i think that's a big issue that a lot of young goalkeepers have is when they hear the word adjustment like sask or omar like if you tell a player like why don't you make an adjustment they think oh i have to do something they have something new i've never done before something i haven't done in the game right now you know um you know how i mean how important is it just to kind of have like that tool that mental toolbox of the, all the scenarios that you've gone through in the past you know and we're going to see examples of kind of how you saw literally the same scenario happen in the game and you recognize from earlier on in the game oh my gosh this is the same thing i realize what what i did wrong not say wrong but not as well mm -hmm. earlier N now i know what to do to make that adjustment so that this is not a successful action Right. Yeah. And I think when I went to pull clips there, it's, I've, we've only had four games here, so, you know, it's not much to, to go back through, but it's, I remember those pretty well because I remember in game thinking the next time that happens, I have to do it differently. Um, and especially when it's like a shot on goal or a goal, you know, it's, it's definitely reinforced. I think it's a bit tougher in possession or uh, when it's when when it's not super close to goal to recognize what's working and what's not working, but that's also important as well, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Omar. Were we Sorry, I think something? I'm on mute. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm on mute. Uh, but yeah, I think <laughs> I'll ask Sask and Mike. I know just from us as coaches, I think one of the biggest things that I've had to learn is when a goalkeeper of mine has made a mistake or has conceded a goal from a mistake, and in my head the way I played. I would make a certain adjustment. And then at halftime, they come to me and they kind of like, you know, ask for that halftime report and they kind of already know they made a mistake. But in my head, I go, hey, you should have done this better. And next time around, I would do this. And I feel like, I don't know if you guys have done it before, but sometimes you give that advice based on how you as the coach would have done it. I, you would have played. So sometimes it can kind of get a little bit misconstrued uh, with the goalkeeper because they're just like, wait, is he asking me to do something new here? Like, this is not something that I'm, I'm familiar with. So I don't know. Sasuke, has that ever, ever happened to you? Maybe at UCLA or, you know, in, in other coaches, uh, coaching ventures you've done? I mean, no, I feel that for me, like I, I tend, I don't base it on what I would have done. Like I have to base it on like their strength. So like a good example, like I actually wasn't at the game because family stuff um but um watching the game against Arizona the the other day like seeing Lauren going down too early in my favorite K save um which she rarely ever does because of her size and quickness she usually stands people up and and her reaction is really good and she went down early and the girl went high and you know scored and um but but talking to her about it, it was like, because of her size and her strength and her, you know, reaction, but she know, I was like, you need to stay up longer for that. You need to stand the person up. Now that could be a different situation depending on who the person is. I think I would have told that advice to anybody, but, um, but like come down to like some of the other keepers, like it's, it's not, I don't base it on my, what I would have done in a situation. I don't like for me, like Mike just said, like I was super, super, super quick off my line. So to be honest with you, I might've gotten to the ball, like, you know, with the short, with the long touch that the forward took, I might've gotten there because that's how I played. That's not how Lauren plays, you know? So. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, you know, I mean, Addie, as like, as a player yourself, personally, you probably appreciate that because I think that was one of my faults as, as a younger goalkeeper coaches, I would think, what would I do here? And I would give them, and, and I think that's just part of the maturation process as a coach. I would think, oh, okay, this is the information that I need to give them because this is what I would do in that situation. And can you kind of recognize when, when a coach is, 
you know, really thinking about you specifically and your strengths and when they're just giving more of a template of like what they think conceptually you should do? Yeah. And I think I personally, um, I'm on the smaller side and I've always been really good with my feet and quick off my line and, and sort of tactical in terms of coming off my line. So I've always had slightly different strengths than other goalkeepers, even of my age. Um, and especially, you know, with a, a male coach that's, you know, tall, that's played goalkeeper as a tall man is different than a small, small woman in terms <laughs> of their positioning and all that kind of stuff. So I do think it has taken me a while to, to recognize, you know, maybe what is advice that's based on their experience and, and what is advice that is sort of tailored to me. But I also think it's very, very hard if you've never played as a smaller goalkeeper to, um, to even to give that have advice. that understanding. Yeah. So yeah, I think, um, and, and I do think it's a learning curve. Like this isn't a, like Omar for me, like if I think back to coaching me, I think I used to absolutely like say, well, this is what I would have done, you know, so everybody should be doing it. You know? <laughs> um, but I think through, through working with multiple sizes and strengths, just like you said, I like, I have to look at it. Like, you know, how would E have handled that? Like she starts further on her line than Lauren. So she might not even have gotten as far as Lauren because she's so, she's much, much, much shorter that this is something that would have been handled totally differently depending on the goalkeeper. But I, I think when I was younger, I didn't, I didn't look at things that way. I agree yeah. with that. No, I also too, uh, it's it, this kind of situation is such a like double-edged sword because I feel like even when I used to play, there were times where I would come for a cross and I would get nudged a little bit and I would try to punch the ball or excuse me, try to catch the ball in traffic and I would end up bobbling it and it wouldn't lead to a goal, but it would be close. And then probably like five minutes later, I would tell myself anything that comes into the box from this point out, I'm just going to punch it. What am I doing? Why am I trying to catch this ball in traffic? And we were playing against it's a terrible story, but U S men's national team, they had like a select team from the development Academy playing against like the U twenties before they went to the world cup. And literally we're down like six zero. It was terrible. And like they crossed the ball in and it was one of those ones where like people were saying, yeah, keeper Omar, you're going to get that. And I came and I punched the ball like the lousiest punch I've ever had right on top of the 18. And, you know, just because it was a, a crappy day for me, this guy one time rifles it to the top corner. And I'm just like, what? Like, what are the what are the chances that like the ball I'm supposed to catch? I punch and this guy has the wor a world, like, <laughs> world beater goal. So and that's what I'm saying. It could go both ways. And I, I mean, if anybody wants to tell a similar story, but like you need to understand that you can't just put a blanket statement over situations just because they didn't go right the first time. Maybe you just say at the, at the fundamental purpose or at the, like the foundation of what my decision is going to be for the next time around is like, understand, make the right decision for that play. Don't try and do more than you should. Sometimes you got to clear the ball up the field. Sometimes you got to try and yeah. play out of the back. You got to understand the difference. And I think um, understanding that part will make it uh, so you don't get scored on like I did. Or poor Omar probably looked at the, the the U.S. soccer scouts on the sideline for the na youth national team, and they just saw them cross off Omar's name. He's like, oh, I man. saw that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm done." laughs> all right. <laughs> but you can tell, you know, when you're watching things, you can tell when people make that blanket decision. Mm -hmm. Like, I, oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Watching somebody, oh, yeah. let's say, will, will box a ball or or pit a bunch of ball, and it's like here like in their face and i'm just open your hands just catch the ball you know but you can tell like five minutes ago that the, they made the decision anything that comes in here i'm just gonna clear and like <laughs> and then they're doing the dumbest stuff and it's just like guess they just kind of made that choice that's how it's going to be the rest of the game you know Sus yeah you, you I, just brought up some go, go addy <laughs> oh i was just gonna say i i played in norway last season and, and it's such a physical league and i swear the refs don't call pretty much anything and so I mean I literally just punched everything because I there was no guarantee that I wasn't just going to be like shoved into the goal right after the play, you know <laughs> so I was like but you know then I come here and we had one game and the ball comes in and I like try to punch it and I'm totally alone and I'm like okay. <laughs> like you're, like, I just catch that. you're in the middle and you're like oh this is a mistake yeah. <laughs> I know and I'm like no one's hitting me. What's happening? So, um, yeah, you just got to make the adjustment. And no, go with it. But, but Addy, that's such a good point because the thing is, I think there's, here's the psychological opponent, uh, your component of making an adjustment too. when, and I've done this myself personally, and I've seen young goalkeepers do this to say, 
every time this happens now, I'm from now on going to do this. And like Omar just said right there, you know, it's like, or, or you just said right there, you know, sometimes your concept of what's going to happen might not actually be the reality, but because you told yourself that's what's going to happen, mm-hmm. you, 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 you're playing the game in your head as opposed to playing what's really in front of you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I mean, and- that's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and sometimes teams like Saskia, like you said, they come out and they play totally different than you thought they were going to play. I mean, I know in college, we, we didn't do much video at all because teams didn't look the same as when they came and played us. Um, and so you can watch all the video you want of like a four, three, three, and them sitting in, and then all of a sudden they show up and they're playing something totally different. Three, four, three. Yeah. And so you right, got to figure it out. Because you're also watching them play against another team. So they're not right. playing against you. You're watching them play against another team and there might be, you know, they might see something different. They come out and they're like, find our weaknesses and play totally a different mm-hmm. line of totally different style and everything. So yeah, that's, you have to adjust them. You And and like, I know, I'm sure Anson's mentality and everything is they'll adjust to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we want to adjust to them and it's Amanda's too. But I think mm-hmm. that you still have to look at what, their game plan is in trying to break down your and to your weakness maybe they see something that we hadn't seen and a weakness we hadn't seen in whether it's you know the goalkeeper or the defense and they're trying to exploit it and now all of a sudden you know on the fly you have to change change how you're handling situations not necessarily right yeah and sometimes if you say this is how we're going to play out and they've decided you're not going to play that way then it doesn't matter you can't just keep doing it over and over and over again um, and sometimes teams will, because <laughs> that's yeah, the game I mean, like, you know, I know what we're expecting from Oregon. It's not, it's quite mm-hmm. possible. That's not what they're going to do, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But, you know, so if we'll see, I'm not going to give it away. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not going to give the scouting report on the, I'm going to give the uh, scouting like, <laughs> totally in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think for, just for any, any young goalkeepers or like, just anybody who's listening who is a young goalkeeper understand like overcorrections are a part of the game. That's how you figure yourself out. That's how you figure how you are. Are you composed in those like final minutes? Um, I know I wasn't, there were times where I was, there were times where I wasn't, but as you know, as you get older and you get more experience, that overthinking shouldn't just go as just overthinking. You need to be aware of, okay, right now I'm kind of mm-hmm. overthinking. What can I do to make sure that the next time this, this comes up, I stay composed. So I'm sure, again, we can all attest to this, is just finding ways when you are going through those rough moments or those like moments where your mind is like, hey, self-fulfilling prophecy, the next situation is probably going to go through your hands because the last situation happened like that too. So find ways to combat those voices or just work with those voices to actually like get in, in a progressive state. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I think, it, go ahead. sorry. No, go ahead. I go think ahead. I, it's your show. Oh, um, oh, it's my show. What are you and I'm having trouble no. talking. Yeah. Um, I also think, there are times in the game uh, where I will do something that's actually correct, but I didn't get enough pace on the ball or um, it's something, it's a little bit off. It's not quite right. Um, And I start thinking, Oh, that was so bad. I need to fix that. And so I start thinking about fixing things that don't really need to be fixed. And then um, you watch the video back and you're like, Oh, like none of that stuff was real. It was all going on in my head. Like (laughs) that pass was fine. (laughs) That everything was fine. Um, And so I think, you know, at least this going into this season, it's sort of one of my goals is to just focus on the things that are clearly wrong and fix those. And then just the rest of the stuff, if the pass is okay, it's okay. Like it doesn't need to be perfect every time. So that's experience. If you want to make it as simplistic as possible for the younger goalkeepers out there, it's like, if you shank a goal kick, you know, Mm -hmm. like don't, don't all of a sudden start stressing out, you know, (laughs) like, like, cause then you're going to, then you're really going to screw up every single one after that. Just Calm down, go back to the basics. How often does that happen? And just go through your motions and take the next one, you know, if you're going long or short, or if you you mess up, you know, a pass out to your back, just go to the next one. Like, cause it, so like you're saying, self-fulfilling prophecy, if you're in your head about it, you probably are gonna screw up the next one. Just let it go. <laughs> trust, trust in your basic skills that you've been doing every day in practice and just mm-hmm. do it again. Um, Addy, I want to bring up some of your clips right here because I think you did a Ooh, fantastic job of uh, putting some, <laughs> some of these together right. right here. Go ahead, Omar. I just have one more question. And again, for <laughs> sure. everybody, and, and for, for Saskia, I'll ask you as a coach and then Adelaide, I'll ask you as a player. 
has there if, if a coach came up to you and like put you know different scenarios like we talk about in nfl it's like you know fourth and whatever you train it and say hey in this situation are we going to call a timeout or are we going to let it play out we so that, that in that situation time. yeah you know so for you yeah exactly so uh, adelaide for you if a coach came up to you and said okay you know we're going to serve some balls in uh five minutes ago you just dropped the ball okay what's what are you, you going to do in this situation or uh you know 94 93rd minute whatever the case may be and we're up one zero and everybody's coming forward flood, flooding forward they put all you know a bunch of traffic mm -hmm. in there for you so i mean do you guys do that often or do you, we do, do that you think pretty much every week so like especially now that we're in season like we the team wise it, we, it's all situational man up man down up one goal um 10 minutes left to go like you know uh and everything like um you know down two goals whatever like there's always scenarios and that trickles through the whole team that's what i mean the gamesmanship like how are we, are we going to play this game if we're up up a goal five minutes left to go like what are my goalkeepers going to do when they get the ball you know you know are we one possess right so that doesn't mean every ball goes long because technically it's a 50 50 ball right a lot of them so you know we absolutely train that because that's reality yeah. you know yeah i think uh we do as well um i think a lot is also situational in terms of like you know focusing on building out or focusing on going to goal um it drives me crazy when <laughs> my team can't kill a game it's like we're up one nothing and it's five minutes left and we're shooting I'm like, just Absolutely. take it to the corner or keep possession or whatever. And for some reason that is really, really, really hard <laughs> for teams to understand. And I don't know if it's the moment. And I, I think that's um, what's difficult too about those scenarios. Um, and I think it's important to train, yeah, what do we do? But there's that emotional component to it. It's kind of like training PKs. You can train taking a PK all the time, but you know, when the pressure's on you, that's a totally different situation. And I think recognizing, okay, we're a man down, we got to slow things down is important. Um, but just when, when you get scored on and keeping the same mentality, um, that's something that I almost feel like you can only train in by playing a ton of games. Um, yeah. I think it's really, really hard to get, get that pressure in training. Yeah. And you'll see it. Like, I mean, there've been times like, you know, even for the goal. Go okay. So you're, you know, you're a goal up and there's less than five minutes left to go in the game and you're running to get the ball that just went over the end line to take a goal kick. Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> take a stroll, know. you know? And so, but if you're in the emotion of the game and so that somebody's got to yell at you and, and that's why to train it, your captain turns around and yells at you. Somebody else on the team, hey, you know, so-and-so, slow down, slow down, you know? Or then I do, or <laughs> you know, or then the coach does. But you know, I agree with you. You you see it, and it goes from the goalkeeper all the way up to the forwards. They get caught up in the emotion of the game and that intensity. And now instead of the forward taking it to the corner flag, they're going to goal. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I want to bring this up. I want to bring this up now, but just because I, I just love. I mean, first off, Addy, you stayed up all night putting all these together. So, uh, so we. we wanna, I really we didn't. I was surprised you liked them. I literally worked from the clips that we had that I we had from the game. So some of them like are obviously paired, and then some of them maybe take some more explaining. But the first no. one's pretty obvious. <laughs> okay, so, so let's uh, let, let's break this down right here. Obviously, this is mm -hmm. the 49th minute. Apparently it's a ball over the top, right? It's like it goes off somebody's head and in, in, into mm -hmm. into like a through ball situation up over the top. Boom! You're coming. You're high. You're now you're dropping back. You stay a little high and you unfortunately get caught right there. Um, and they celebrate, which is a uh, which is <laughs> which is obviously. Why uh, are we showing this? <laughs> no, because it's a, the episode's adjustments. I'm okay, I'm now kidding. we're showing. Okay, so so Addy, you kind of want to break down. <laughs> Kind of break yeah, down what so, happened here. Okay. I mean, I we you're the first the back. guest to ever come on that has put a clip on of. of she sent it. She sent no, it. No, I'm just I saying. Did. I have a lot of a respect for that. I think okay. that's awesome. Okay. I think it's awesome. I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I mean, he it's was a teaching for moment. Game adjustments, and yeah, the, you know, yeah, we we play three at the back. Um, part of that is I, I play pretty high, and I just get caught hauling butt back to the goal and don't get set don't slow down like right when she's about to shoot i'm i don't feel like i'm in position um 
well, they're kind of, but it's too late. I'm moving so fast. And then my feet just don't get in the ground to, to push off and go back the other way. Right. Um, really, I needed to stop yeah. sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just slow down a bit earlier, even though I'm not on my ball line and just, you know, deal with it. Um, and I mean, that was pretty immediately obvious to me after the fact, you know, when you talk about it in a game, you're like, okay, I did that wrong. I need to not do it wrong again. Um, and then it actually did happen, uh, like later on in the game. So, yeah, yeah so that's I mean, I don't, want, same thing. I don't, I think the retreating is fine because sometimes I just had this conversation today with one of our goalkeepers that sometimes it gives your, it gives your D a time to recover. Right. So mm -hmm. you, by you retreating, there, not ending up in no man's end. And if you had gotten set earlier and that's a say, that's a, you know, that's a save. Um, and if she realizes you're in position and she can't take another touch because you've given your defense time to recover, let's see the adjustment. <laughs> and it's funny because in my head, I'm thinking as this play is happening, I'm like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. And I still think if I slowed down a half second earlier, like I would have held onto this ball, but uh, it ends up being a save. So it's better. So, so let's, let's look at this analysis and here's the adjustment, Addy, basically what happens is a similar situation. It's a through ball, this 82nd minute, it's a through ball coming across your, your high again, like you were saying, <laughs> this time you take your time, you set, and now it's a great steer away right there. Um, it, it's almost like, while you saw this play developing, you're like, oh, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know how to, how to decelerate a little bit as she makes that touch right there. You're still slightly out of position. But once she takes that second touch, you're already kind of set, ready to go. She strikes, and it's a steer like this that. Is, uh, this is making me you know, re rethink my sessions on in possession and out of possession. I think the next session I have, I'm going to have my goalkeeper start at the bottom of the circle and then just sprint back and see mm -hmm. if we can <laughs> – I don't know, Adelaide, is, is that like no, – I, I, you know, it's a high position. <laughs> it's funny because I, I say that all the time. There's not a ton of – like, yes, there are goalkeeper drills that are done where you just – step backwards and then have to dive forward. But the reality is I feel like in play, you're almost always backing up, backpedaling, mm -hmm. crossover, sprinting. I mean, especially on our team, because we do play so high. I mean, there've been times where I just turn around and sprint back to my goal, like full out. So yeah, I definitely think that that's the, and we, and it's funny because um, we don't, they don't film all of our goalkeeper sessions, but after this, we did do um, a drill where we sort of started at the 18 and then you have to recover back to the goal almost exactly the same scenario just to to work on it yeah yeah Omar, we 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 train because i agree with you there if you think about like as growing up in our goalkeeper training and everything how many times did we do drills when we were younger where you had to backtrack and then stuff but it's the reality of the position more than anything now because of how much the, the keepers used and implemented through possession and so that pulls you up and out higher and so uh, we do function when we're doing functional training and um, we'll do it where whether you're you're starting with some sort of a service um, and then it's an in instant counter and you've got to retreat. And part of that, and I've discussed it, part of retreating is still understanding where you are, like using your peripheral, understanding the lines on the field, understanding how deep you are or how deep you're not, because sometimes kids get totally confused and lost. They, they haven't backed up enough, then they stop, then they're in no man's land, right? So did you go back enough? If you can't get back, sometimes you have to make decisions just to stay and go forward. So you got to figure that out. It has to be trained. It has to. Yeah. Steve, uh, Steve Clark from the, the Timbers, when I, I did like an IG live with him, and he mentioned that he's like, Memo, our goalkeeper coach, he's like, there's one thing that we do more than I don't think anybody else does is moving backwards and then uh, diving out of that uh, re mm -hmm. recovery movement backwards. So exactly what Adelaide is talking in the situation, it's like that cross step to the angle or literally just cross step down the middle and then turning and then diving. And I think you said, we don't train that enough. And I think, yeah, we talked about with in possession, out of possession, the way that the, the goalkeeper is asked to be involved with, with starting the attack. A lot of times, if you're asked to do that, you're going to lose it. Like Burhalter too. I mean, I'm sure Zach Steffen probably does this often too with the national team training is that he gets caught in possession or something like that. And he has to recover back to his line and he has to focus on actually seeing the ball, recovering, setting, and all then those things in one. And come forward. Because exactly. With that motion, like you don't know if you're recovering and then there's another pass in there. What if they send another through ball? Now you're recovering. You have to be able in that recovery motion to change direction, come forward again, maybe come forward and sprint and go for a 50-50 ball or something. So yeah. it's, yeah, 
it has to and, be it's it's what you do more than anything yeah and i would say adelaide for you in, in those situations is that like something like you said you guys started doing it a little bit more from the 18 but yeah that's like the recovery aspect of it but how like like zoned in have you gotten on that okay i'm recovering and i gotta make sure that that last movement into my into my save needs to be something that i've like functionally trained over and over and over so that it's not an unfamiliar feeling yeah um definitely i mean we worked on it that week after it happened um but it probably should be something that we work on on more often i definitely feel in the games um the way we build out i end up almost being like another center back so um, I definitely feel in the games that that is the movement that I repeat over and over and over and over again, sprint back, like get that awareness into the goal and then hopefully be able to make a save. I would say that happens like 10 times a game, probably Jeez. not a full out breakaway, but just even if the defender gets there and, and closes them down, you're still trying not to get too far past your, your near post as well. Yeah. Cause, um, mm. that's easy as well. You slow down and you get set and then you're just still moving that way a little bit. Yeah. So it's definitely something that that happens a lot and i think I mean, you brought up a good thing in the first clip was that knowing when even though you didn't make it back to your ball line you still had uh -huh. to set and i think that in that recovery motion that sprint that everything younger goalkeepers you know i mean like club so can get caught into i got it's the same thing as doing any drill i, I gotta do i gotta get to my ball line and no, you have to see when the ball is going to strike. And, and like, oh, it's that, you know, better be set and set and, and out of position than moving. So, okay. you know, better to be off your ball line and set than, than oh, but I got to get here. And the mm -hmm. ball went there. So, and that's hard Absolutely. to flip that from the recovery into that to say, oh, I got to stop anyway because they're about to strike the ball. Yeah. And greedy. sometimes you don't even get fully set. It's almost like on a three goal situation when you're getting across the goal you're not going to be set, but you need to not be just flying in one direction, yeah. you know, just kind of like slow down enough where you can go back the other way yeah. um, if you I, need to. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. I do make them train that. Just go. Addy, Addy, you just brought something just really go. good before. Yeah. Just for fun. Just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, it is fun. Like, just go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if they're all the way back post, yeah. I mean, you just got to. Yeah. I, I do want to bring this yeah. up because uh, you brought up a really good point before we go to this next clip right there is that minimal adjustments is really the key right here and the specificity of your adjustments too. Um, I think the biggest mistake, and, and, and we, we've talked about this, you know, over and over again on, on the podcast is that younger goalkeepers, when they think adjustment, they think a complete re revamping of the movement they just made or the tactical decision they just made as opposed to just a slight alteration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a, a lot of times I think in the, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe maybe, maybe maybe it was a rhetorical question i don't know maybe i answered it myself i don't know <laughs> oh well i also think like in the in the next clip um we we were playing on grass for the first time and it was like wet and everything was tending to die on the field um and so i think part of the adjustment was although i just think it was a bad maybe a bad decision on the first one um i get away with it but uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's why, think, why don't you break it? Why don't you okay. break it down for everybody right here? So let's, let's, uh, walk yeah. So this here. ball, this is a long ball coming through. Um, and I get caught in no man's land, um, kind of assuming that she'd take another touch or that the ball would die. Um, and in the moment I was like, Oh, I'm not out. I'm not back. Shoot. But a different word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, she ends up hitting it wide. And then later on the game, I was like, okay, obviously if that happens again, just stay in your goal. Like there's no need to get out. There. Yeah. And then you just, yeah, I mean, because Her headphones just died. <laughs> oh, whose headphones died? Mine did. Oh, Addie's did. oh okay. <laughs> no worries. Dude, so I'm here crazy. we see, so, he, I gotta go turn so, heat on. Hold on. so here Keep we see the go. adjustment. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. raining in LA. It's raining. That's that one, that three days of rain that we get, you know? Okay. I, I go quick. So everybody who's, who's listening, these are certain, these are balls that are getting played over the top of the defense, probably from like 40, 40 yards out and right on the 18. And then you're getting caught now in between coming and then coming and, and, uh, and closing on the ball. So getting caught in between those two. In the first clip, in the second, in this clip, she, she realized that and held. Yeah. And like, it's funny because in the game, like I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should just go take her and the ball. 
<laughs> but then in my head was like, no, no, it's going to be fine. Just stay. Um, and I think it was because of the last clip. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, those are, uh, those are the balls, the balls of death guys. Those are the oh ones where gosh, it's like, yeah. do I come, do I stay? <laughs> and then right there that like that discipline to be like, no, I'm going to stay back. And again, we talk about it. It comes through uh, the strengths, the physical strengths and the the experiences that we've seen. And if I, you know, for example, Zach Steffen, I have a clip of him against uh, I forgot who in New York, I think. And he stays on his line, hugs his line with the ball coming through traffic and last second digs it out with his bottom left hand. I think if I had, you know, uh, Begovic or somebody who's like six foot five, six foot six, I'd say, hey, probably come out and, you know, cause some commotion. But for somebody who's at his size, six, two, six, three, and extremely, extremely quick, I'd say, yeah, stay on your line and play to your advantage. So I think, again, it, it comes down to uh, who you are as a goalkeeper and then not, not over adjusting based off of a, a scenario that just happened. Right. Yeah. I mean that. I mean that. That that's a that's a really good point right there. Um, what I what I want to say in regards to in regards to that too, is that I think one thing we need to bring up too as well is for a lot of young goalkeepers that are listening to this right now, is that you were talking about just shanking the goal kick and everything and everything like that. You know, like oh my gosh, I miss hit this goal kick. Okay, well now I have to change everything because I just miss hit this goal kick. I, or you just start thinking about it and stressing mm -hmm, yourself you out. Over and you stress yourself out. So you know, so mm -hmm. how much of or your coach. Basically, because this happens with a lot of young goalkeeper coaches, Omar, I'm sure you can attest to this. Is they think they have to say something at halftime because their coach is looking at them. It's like, well, you got, I'm giving instruction. You got to give instruction, mm -hmm. right? You know, so like, you know, isn't that, that's a situation, obviously, that you, you've been in, in before. And Addy, have you obviously, as a pro player, obviously, you, Suski, as, as a pro player, or you, you know, Omar, as, as a coach, you know, kind of been like, oh, boy, I shouldn't have said anything. Or Addy, or like, oh, boy, he shouldn't have said anything to me, or she shouldn't have said anything to me. Um, it's tough because it kind of depends on what your mentality at the time is. You know, if you're like in a, a strong mentality, it's like nothing. Um, if you're kind of very vulnerable, it could be not the best. But for me personally, I appreciate like a pretty direct approach, obviously not like terribly demeaning or if it's obvious that I've messed up repeating, it's not great. But um, I think for me, direct is better because I prefer to know that my coach, if they're unhappy, is going to say something versus just not saying anything <laughs> and thinking it, you know? So um, I think it probably depends on the goalkeeper. I think I, I for me, the, oh, the only time during the flow of the game is if you consistently are doing the same thing wrong. Like I'll usually let you adjust it or something like that. And like, but if you're consistently making the same mistake, if it's like something like within the flow of the game, like you, you keep giving the same ball, like to, to a back on distribution and they keep getting their ass kicked and stuff like that. Like, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Like how many times are you going to do it? Then I'll get up and I'll be like, what are you doing? Stop doing it. I wait till halftime. And I like, if there's a goal, if there's a breakdown, I'll, we'll talk about it. I'm usually pretty kind of just like, cause I know my keepers know what they did wrong. Like, so it's not like a reteaching like major moment. It's something, you know, we'll address in the week during training. Yeah, okay. But what was the adjustment? And we'll talk about it that, you know, you need to make. Okay, cool. You get it. You know what you did wrong. You know the adjustment if it happens again. All right, you know, so that's probably the extent of it. No. And, and then yeah. the only other coaching really for me at half time will be like, if I keep seeing something like they keep, just keep look for, they're looking to shoot, chip you over the top. They're looking to this, just keep an eye on it or something, like, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, even, uh, you know, I talked to Ian Foyer, I mean, before COVID started and I, I asked him a question. I said, Hey, what did you do to, you know, you step into the national team uh, uh, sessions with like Tim Howard and Sean Johnson, and all those guys, what did you do to gain their respect? And that was a kind of a loaded question. Cause I think, you know, as a coach, you don't really try to gain someone's respect. You just kind of do what you do. And then if they respect it, they respect it. And hopefully they do. That's why you're there. But he said like, Tim Howard respected me because I actually wanted to coach him. I actually came to every session and I wanted to give him like ideas of how to get better. Mm -hmm. And someone like that respects you and understands that you're extending the olive branch of like knowledge. And he, he responded well to that. And so I, as a young coach took that not out of context, but I heard that and I go, oh, okay. So that means you got to make, you know, points to goalkeepers at all moments at all times. <laughs> and so like, I remember like I had a session and I was like, I was coaching this guy and a really good goalkeeper and i would like make a correction here make a correction there make a correction there and i could tell like after like my fifth or sixth correction he kind of looked at me like bro just let me get three or four reps before you start commenting <laughs> and but that 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 again that as a player as well and as a coach you have to be willing to 
okay, pick up on signs of how people are reacting to the way you're saying things. Mm -hmm. If somebody mm -hmm. is uh, uh, somebody who's, you know, full of, uh, full of confidence knows that that was just an error that didn't, you know, just not a part of them. And, you know, they're, they're moving on from it. You come in at halftime and go, I need to say something so inspirational, which is what I've done. So inspirational <laughs> that what I say here is going to propel this person to the next <laughs> half. And they're going to make this amazing save. They're going to look up, they're going to point at me and say that halftime speech is what I needed coach. Thank you. <laughs> And I, I swear, I, I used to think like that, you know, like I, I'm watching the miracle and I'm watching this coach give this halftime speech. And I'm like, man, I got to do that every single game. What and goalkeeper then again, you coach have you ever seen do this ever? No, one, no one. But that's what I'm saying. You, as a coach, you, you some, and a player, I guess as well, like you take things out of context and sometimes you go into games and that is what you've built your whole mentality on is that piece of information that you didn't do much more digging on. You just took it and ran. So I think again, as, as a coach and as a player, making sure that like you're aware of there are times where you're going to make, <laughs> make mistakes and experiment with things you're going to make mistakes on. Just make sure you don't make the same mistake twice like me. So so Oscar, you, you realize, remember how you always talk about kids being too literal? Uh -huh. there's, an, there's an example right there of a coach being <laughs> yeah. taking something too literal. Like, Ian, if Ian's I, listening to this. I actually do that in practice. Like I'll be in practice and I'll be like, depending on it, I'm just like, I'm walking, I'm not, I'm not going to coach you. Like, especially like, I think, let's say we're ending something with some sort of shooting, like some, something with the four, like, and it's like power finesse or it's something, you know, team trained, um, which as a UNC player, you know what that is. <laughs> and and um, what it is. there's no coaching needed <laughs> in that moment. Like, you know, this is, this is a over shot over, over, over again, you know, what, whatever it is, I, I'm not going to sit here and coach you. I'm going to step back and get through the drill. And then we'll talk about it. If you kept making the same mistake, if you're, if you're on your heels or something like and you keep getting caught on your heels, I might be like, you know, you know, E, you know, body weight forward, that might be the only thing I might say. But there are times in practice even that you just, you step back and just let, let it happen. And then water break, talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so true. Like as a player, you know, you love to just play or just do the drill or, you know, you might like want a few coaching points, but you know, even from a team perspective, you don't want the coach to be just coaching the whole time. It's like playing is great. And <laughs> I know that from a player's perspective, but then like you switch over and I, you know, I've done a lot of goalkeeper coaching and stuff and it's so hard. It's so hard. Oh my gosh. Or, or you think I should be coaching more or, or whatever it is. And it, it's just so funny how there's such a difference. I know as a player, they don't need me to be talking. And as a coach, <laughs> you're like, I have to say something. It's really hard. No, it is hard because I'll sit there and then I'll be standing next to like Jane or Sam or somebody. And I'll be like, and they'll just look at me and my head will be down. And I want to say, so I'll just be like, let them, let them figure it out. Because part of me will just say, let, let, the, let's see if they'll make the body adjustment that I would tell them right now, trying to speak to them from afar and see if they somehow hear me. But um, let's see if you can make the adjustment on yourself, on your own. Let's see. Let's see. Especially in a drill, like, like a shooting drill or something. And if you don't, then we're going to talk about it. I was waiting for you to make this adjustment. You never did. Um, but some, you got to let them figure it out. Yeah. And Addie, I think you have to honestly, like you have to start recognizing as a, as a, as a player yourself, <laughs> you have to start recognizing a theme, you know, and be honest with yourself. Like, okay, was this just a freak incident or is this a theme? How many times? And in your opinion, like, I mean, there is no miracle number, you know, but it's just kind of a, a, a sensation. You start recognizing, oh my gosh, this is happening to me every time. Yeah, what's going so, on? So mm -hmm. is it me? It's got to be me if it's happening every time, right? Yeah, and I think um, I think that happens a lot in possession in the build out. Um, the most is when you, you realize this isn't working. Why isn't it working? This isn't working. Why isn't it working? But you know, especially if you're under pressure, you revert back to what you're most comfortable with. Um, and so I think you have to actively recognize, okay, well, this is what I have to do the, or try to do the next time I get the ball. And a lot of times in possession, especially if they're high pressing, uh, it's hard to sort of lean into the pressure a little bit um, and know that the option is going to be somewhere else, even though you feel like you're getting cut off. So um, yeah, I definitely think recognizing in a game, especially, I think that's important as a team recognizing, okay, what's their trigger to press? you know, where, which way are they pressing, you know, where do they want us to play the ball? 
um, because a lot of times you will find the open player and it's not working because that's what they want you to do. You're playing, the player they want you to play. you're playing into their game, their, their, their scheme right there. You're playing into, all right, we're going to let them see this open player because we're sitting there waiting. Come on, come on, come on, come on, then press and everything. Don't keep doing it. Realize that that's what they're doing. They're baiting you. And, and again, uh, that goes back to uh, even like an in, in inner squad scrimmage watching that happen. And I'm like, okay, how many times is she going to keep doing this? Like how many times is she going to keep doing this? And like, sometimes we'll just go sit up in the stadium. Steph, so we did, so I'm not cut like coaching and then ha- like, we'll have a break, but are you making the adjustment? Like you said, is it a theme or did mm-hmm. you just make one mistake? Mm-hmm. Are you not recognizing that, you know, she's baiting you are you not recognizing that Raylan is letting you play the ball out wide and every time you do it and then they press you get the ball back she's she's stripping you of the ball like Mm -hmm. that's they're they're doing but don't keep doing it you know and there it takes you have to have the ability to to see more than just there they are the dogs (laughs) like so focused you know like it's funny one thing that you want to do you have to see the whole field Mm -hmm. It's, it's funny you brought up pressing. Oh, Omar, did you do you want to go before I before I bring uh, this up right here? No, I just uh, one last thing I'll say before we get okay. into this part. I think okay. uh, from the coach's <laughs> side, from the co- sorry before we get into that, it's on my head, so I've been thinking about it. But I think on the coach's side as well, I think um, like what my like the Galaxy coach that I had way back in the day, he would dissect things so deep that we understood that when when we made this mistake, we knew how to pick the pieces back up. Um, for example, when it came to goal kicks, we talk about shanking a goal kick. He would always say, get back to the basics, which for us was just head down, strike through the ball. And he'd always say, you can admire it once it's gone and hit your target. But you mm-hmm. trying to look at it the entire time is going to throw your shoulders off. And you have it sometimes an automatic and sometimes you don't. And when you don't, this is what you need to do. So I think as coaches as well, we can do a better job. Um, I, I say me, I could do a better job of instead of giving those moments of, uh, you know, hey, you should have made that save or you should have done this. Give it more substance of like, I mean, I had a conversation with a young kid who gets in his own head last week and I told him like, hey, you know, when we shift from one side of the goal to the other side, I want you to understand that you're getting too crazy right now. Your mind's going a little too crazy. Mm. Calm yourself down, build the fundamentals, build the the foundation now so that when you're in a game and you made a bad pass or they scored a goal on you or you, you caught a ball out of bounds and it turned into a corner kick. I'm not saying he did that, but if you do that, you know how to react. And he was like, Oh, thanks, coach. I don't know if he actually did it. I, I mean, the rest of the, se- the rest, the rest, the rest of the session, he was off I his love rocker. Your stories, Omar. But, but I think, but, <laughs> but I think that I think as coaches, we we could do a better job, and as players as well, to understand why am I doing this? If I do know, if I do know why, and in a game, all things fail. Now I can build everything back up from score one, and I think that should be the message. I think for people when you're trying to make those in in game adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, I want I want to bring this up right now because we were talking about high pressing. Wait, one, and, one more uh, thing, Mike. One more thing. Oh, oh dear kidding. God! Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you <laughs> said, "Oh dear God." <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Addy. Let's uh, let, let's walk through this real quick. So we were talking about examples of you know doing something over and over again and wondering like, why mm-hmm. is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Here's an example of you making an adjustment and recognizing kind of basically. And Omar, after we play this, you can either do the play by play or Addy can because she was the actual mm-hmm. one who, who went through this right here. But basically. Again, they're high pressing. You're recognizing pressure. So you go square there. It's not a horrible ball or whatever. But then after that, we'll go to the next play right here. Yeah. Ball played. Now they're chasing. They're high pressing. High pressing, you're recognizing. And instead of going square this time, you recognize the open player here, turn and spin. And now we've got a counter play right there. Mm-hmm. You know, because they didn't see that coming because before you, every single time you'd been going square every time, uh, time and time and time and again. Yeah, that was like a perfect example of they, you know, basically wanted you, wanted us to play um, out wide to that fullback. And um, it, it was tough because they were starting central in order to push us wide, but there were definitely moments like here, they're caught a little bit wide and it's just open um, in there. But yeah, but prior to this, I had played my right back quite a few times and I was like, it's not, not what I want. <laughs> Are they wearing long pants? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right here, is it, is it because- I, mean, I know that's totally out of like, you know, sorry, yeah. my focus. No, to-, to be fair, that was a cold week um, in Denmark. And, but <laughs> hey. they're wearing shorts. I just want to point that out. They're wearing pants. <laughs> I was just like, hmm. And then I was remembering where you were playing. So I was like, oh, yeah. 
There was a couple <laughs> that were cold, man. Oh. But uh, Omar, do you want to do it? Do you want to do a play-by-play of uh, of this, or, or or we do pretty pretty self-explanatory nah, right here? It's pretty self-explanatory. You just yeah. you know okay. play play what play what the game gives you, and it looked like you know you played it short once, and then the other time around you realize okay if they're overloading that side, maybe I go the other way, and you can see here mm-hmm. exactly I don't know what that number is, but uh, the striker was taking away that that ball, and you realize okay. Uh, there's an uneven amount of people on that side. Let's go back the other way. So I think that's again yeah. playing what you like, play what you see. Yeah. Three v one out on this side or yeah. four v two, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> by the way, uh, Addy, we'll we'll start wrapping up soon because I know you've got a you you you've, you've <laughs> got to head to bed because you've got a seven a.m. training and you're only like thirteen hours ahead of us or something insane like that. So <laughs> yeah, such a time difference. Um. I, I want to talk a little bit about about this point before we uh, before we kind of wrap up and everything, and that is kind of the the fear that a lot of young goalkeepers have in making an adjustment because change is scary. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, like especially young kids, they even if something's not working, they're scared to try something new because they've never done it before. You know, so um, you know, like what advice do you give to like any 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 young goalkeepers who who might be like, I don't, I've never done this before, I don't want to try it, and I'm scared to do it in a game. Yeah. I mean, I really like the, the toolbox analogy. I think, you know, we get caught up a lot in terms of, you know, oh, this is the right way to save the ball or that's the right way to save this kind of play. Um, and I think you might as well have as many tools as you possibly can, and then you can pick the right one in the right circumstance. So to say, oh, you know, I, I don't save breakaways this way, you know, is you know, silly because what if you need it, you know? Um, and I think, especially when you're young, I mean, I'm, getting old now, but especially when you're young, you might as well try something new because you'll figure out what you like best. I mean, that's life, right? Just do as much stuff as you can and and see which, what you like best. Um, And so uh, I think, especially when you're younger, I think everything feels like it's super, super important in the moment. But if you're thinking of your career as being long, uh, you might as well learn something new now, and then you'll have it for the future. And honestly, the biggest thing I can say is that if a coach tries to teach you something new, just try it and you don't have to do it in the game. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you get to decide what you do when the, the moment comes to save the ball, you do what you think is right. But um, yeah, it's always good to learn something new. So you don't necessarily have to think of it as, Oh, I'm changing. It's like, well, I'm just trying something different. And if it doesn't work, I can go back to what I was doing before. You can always go back. So um, I think maybe that'll take the pressure off a little bit. I love the fact that you just said you can always you can always go back because I think that's that's where I think a lot of the fear comes from from kids is that they go, oh I can never go back to doing what I was doing before because coach told me to do it this well, way. Well, sometimes so they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, sometimes she's they really should nice, not. guys. I promise, oh, she's right. really nice. <laughs> sometimes they shouldn't. I just had oh. to say. No. Yeah, we we got to get Lauren on the show, dude. We got to see what's, 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 what's really going on in session. <laughs> I was thinking about my little kids from the Bulls and stuff. I wasn't thinking about UCLA. Uh, but to, uh, Mike, to, I'll make my last point. But Adelaide, what you what you just said about the toolbox, I think is very important. I think within that toolbox, you have to have the psychological toolbox as well. And I think a lot of times there are high pressure moments that caught for me at least uh you know my my mind goes crazy. What if this happens? What if that happens? And then I started realizing, okay, well that's happening. How can I stay composed when that happens? And it's always going to keep coming back because that's just the nature of our position. And, you know, if we play at a high level, we're going to consistently run into those situations. So underneath the physical capabilities and toolbox that you have as a goalkeeper, the psychological ones as well, to stay composed in those high pressure moments, just so that you can actually stay composed, use that toolbox now, and then, you know, supplement it with the actual physical capability of a goalkeeper. So you can calm yourself down. And now you're actually making a rash or proper decisions, not a rash Mm -hmm. uh, decision. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are multiple solutions to, to every problem. And so, you know, it's, you know, if you have different answers, um, you don't, the, the situation is going to, you know, force one of them out of you. But if you have multiple answers in your toolbox, that's, that's better because yeah. you don't know that it, it could be, it could be the craziest thing or something everything's different. Everything's crazy. The sport's crazy. You don't know how the ball's going to bounce. You don't know this. You don't know that, but not everything's done one way. And um, what I meant by, by sometimes they shouldn't, and sometimes you shouldn't. Sometimes if you have a really bad habit, your coach is trying to get you to stop that bad habit. And that that's something that should be left out of your toolbox. 
you know, and move on. But, but that lies on coaches to really explain why they're doing what they're doing, why they're changing habits, why they're um, like making those adjustments. Exactly. So that the player truly understands and buys into, okay, I shouldn't be on my heels every time, or I shouldn't be this far near post every time, and 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 why, or I shouldn't always be on my line. Like you, as a coach, you got to explain it so that they yeah. they understand and they want exactly. to change. You know, yeah. right? And like you know, if you play out of the back, you don't want to be it, want it to be because you can't hit a long ball, right? So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's that's true. And I saw that against one of the teams we played. I was like, mm-hmm. guys, they keep playing that short because she can't hit a goal kick. And I realized, and she can't hit a long ball. And I realized that like two minutes in, when one of their players took a goal kick, I'm like, we are in Division One college right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what if she was having? So what if she was I having a, ham, a, a, a hamstring, a hamstring issue, a quad issue, a groin issue? She could have had any of those three Good. things. And now and you're, you know now you're, going, now you're. <laughs> we are going to exploit it. I'm not talking about my team. I'm like, get her the ball, pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, Lauren, if you ever need any help or any no, psychological Lauren, help, just call me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't. I kid almost had an assist the other day. I feel we we had we had a. I remember we had the courage. All three or four of their goalkeepers, three of their goalkeepers on at once. And I feel like after after Sauce leaves and and you know she doesn't she's not on one episode. We're gonna bring all them in and just have like a full <laughs> on like. Just hey guys, what really goes down at training? Is Sasuke, is she a sweetheart? What's what's going? Is she throwing? I am. Bob, Bob and I throwing chairs. Like what's going on over here? <laughs> I am That's a sweetheart. All- I don't know what I don't know what the NCAA uh, rules are on that stuff, but like that would be a pretty darn fun episode. I'm I'll tell you, I it. yelled once. Once I got really irritated because they were making the same mistake over and over and over again, and I cursed and yelled, and I thought the whole team was gonna fall over. They were like, <laughs> "Did that just come out of Coach Saskia?" And I, I don't think it, I was like, "I can get mad every once in a while." <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Yeah, oh that's when the coach never gets mad and then they yell. You're like, oh, you're like yep. oh, then it's serious. <laughs> it's serious. It's that's really right. Serious. That or I was just having a bad morning. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, Addie, thanks. Thanks for staying up late for us uh, o- over there. Honestly, this is this has been really fantastic. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's really awesome when we see, you know, a high level professional such as yourselves that th- that are that are willing to be honestly humble and, and honest and open enough to, you know, show, you know, plays that maybe didn't go the way you wanted them to go, you know, on the air, because I think it's, it is a valuable education tool from for kids. I mean, it, we always talk about it on social media, you know, Omar, you know, it's, it's great to see wonderful saves and stuff like that. But you know, it's, a, it's also a valuable lesson to, to understand the why of why things worked and why things didn't work, you know, so. Yeah, hey, Patty, are you still, is your fa- family still in Princeton? Um, no, actually, they retired to North Carolina. Oh, I was going to say, well, shout out to our hometown, but whatever. I know. I miss it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah um, tell them. Um, Addie, if anybody wants to connect with you, where's, where's the best place for them to reach out? Um, uh, social media. My, my name, Adelaide Gay, or Adelaide A. Gay, middle initial. Um, or email, adelaide.gay at gmail.com. <laughs> I always, you know, it's funny because people are like, oh, you're going to give out your email. I always give it out and nobody emails me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mike that. Uh, yeah. I'll start right. getting lots of emails from him. All right. All right. And, and that point, guys, uh, Omar Zini's email is, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> At Pro GK Academy underscore guys, if you want to reach out to Omar Zini at Saskia underscore Weber on all social media platforms, contact it inside the 18. That's the number 18 media.com. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion or at goalkeeper podcast on all social media platforms, if you want to reach out to me directly at Michael Magid, M A G I D. That's all the time on Inside the 18, and we are out. Later, guys. Yeah!